So we're going to go netherite mining, and I've already collected a whole bunch of materials um, to make sure that this trip will be successful, at least as much as I can. And I remembered like two minutes before I began, oh hey, I don't remember what level I'm supposed to mine netherite at, and according to what I've read, it's supposed to be 12? Um, so hopefully it's 12. Hopefully 12 is the good number that will get all of the netherite. So, we'll see. Uh, pay no attention to the corners of my of my nether portal. That is nothing with which you need to concern yourself. I did set up a nether portal on the spawn island as well. And I did hook them up. So, we'll be able to get from here to the... Why? I have... I have so many questions. Like, how... Okay, this is actually very concerning. How many mobs are coming in through here? Okay, anyway, we're not gonna pay attention to that. Um we're just gonna we're just gonna move right along. Um uh, I guess I guess this is as good a place as any to make a to make a stairway down. You know, I don't need to use an assault dungeon. So. Wait. Okay, I do have torches. I panic for a moment and I'm like, oh no, I did not I did not bring torches. Um, I do anticipate that in addition to getting a bunch of ancient debris, I'm also going to be picking up a lot of netherrack and a lot of blackstone and possibly basalt, depending upon where we end up as far as biomes are concerned. Um... That music isn't too loud, is it? I am realizing I'm not nearly as good at multitasking as I thought I was. Because I'm like, oh yeah, I can totally talk while I staircase down. And it's, for some reason, my brain isn't liking it. I'm hoping this is something that improves with practice. I tend to believe it is. I maybe was slightly hasty with the title, because originally I was going to title this something like bed mining for two hours while ranting about furniture assembly. Um, cause I know that you're supposed to come into live streams with at least like a vague idea of something that you can talk about. And the thing that I figured is, okay, I, we're, we're gonna be bed mining. A bed is a piece of furniture, uh, so this is literally the best time for me to like vent my <laughs> grievances regarding furniture assembly. And it's not necessarily, okay, hey, first bit of lava. Excellent, we're gonna stash that because that is free fuel for the furnaces back home. Nothing wasted. Anyway, as I was saying, furniture assembly because um, uh, I've had a number of experiences with furniture in the recent past and I have a lot of thoughts. I don't know if they're necessarily good thoughts, but they are thoughts. And see, this is the other thing is I'm like, oh man, they keep talking about storytelling and how it's so important to be a good storyteller when you when you're on youtube making videos and i'm like okay i'm gonna watch some videos on youtube about how to be good at storytelling because that seemed like a logical solution to me and i'm now blanking on everything that those videos said to do which is probably not great i'm gonna chalk it up to nerves but i could probably start with the first with the most recent incident is um i no one gets weirded out talking about laundry hampers right because that's like not that's not too personal is it hopefully not because i'm gonna talk about it anyway so anyway i have like pretty much always had like a single uh laundry hamper but then i got the idea i got it into my head that it would be a great idea to have more than one laundry hamper because you know, rather than needing to sort my laundry all at once on laundry day, I could sort my laundry, like, throughout the week as I wear the clothes. You know, that way I'm breaking up the work, and that way laundry day doesn't feel so, like, laborious. The, the main issue with that, though, is floor space. I have enough floor space for one laundry hamper, multiple laundry hampers not so much. So, I found a, like, rack? I don't know how to describe it. Basically, it's like... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I forgot. I'm wearing diamonds, so it doesn't matter. Also, I turned... 
I turned natural regeneration back on because I, yeah, when I realized that natural regeneration turning off didn't work the way I thought it would in Peaceful, I realized that I didn't really care all that much whether or not it was still on. So the best way I can describe it, my current laundry hamper now, my new one, is that it's basically like a rack with like four cloth-like drawers. And so that means I effectively have like four hampers, um, which means that I can, instead of having one, I can now sort stuff into four different containers. Um, but trying to assemble it was interesting. Like I'm almost certain that the instructions, like they ran them through Google Translate and just pasted them in. I. I hope that I kept it somewhere, because it's like, there's like these cylinders that are part of the individual drawers. I think it's like the part that ends up being like the handle. And I think the instructions called them rounds. And it's like, I can totally understand how Google Translate would think cylinder is a round. But yeah, it was, it was interesting. So the instructions are always fun when you're assembling furniture. Um, but the thing that I found most interesting is I was expecting when this arrived that it would just use like a normal like four um, point like star tip uh, Phillips head um, screws or that it would use like the, the slotted flat head screw. But all of these had hex screws and the kit. I just realized I'm already I'm already it. OK, I don't need to go. I need to actually back up because I was supposed to stop at 12. Okay, here we go. Okay, 12, great. This is where we're gonna start mining. So I think it's like, make just like a little, like a little room just so that I can kind of get my bearings and set stuff down. Anyway, it had a, one of those Allen wrenches. I don't know if you've never seen them, basically instead of having like a single, like in the top of the screw, instead of having like a slot, it's like a hexagon shape. And so the tool that you have is basically um, a rod that is in the shape of a head. I'm describing it poorly. You can look up, look up an Allen wrench and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and that's what was included in the package. And I looked it up later, but I was trying to figure out why they would have an Allen wrench. You know, at the time I thought, okay, this makes sense because it's way easier to fit like a small piece of metal than it is to try to fit in a screwdriver. And the other thing is also it's probably a lot cheaper because, you know, there's only the one piece of metal and it's not like the metal shaft and the handle. But the thing that I was surprised about, um, which now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Another reason why they will um, put Allen wrenches in with furniture instead of normal um, excuse me, screw I should take a water, drink of water. Hold on. Sorry about that. It's just I could feel my mouth getting dry and hopefully it doesn't sound too crackly anyway. So the reason why they also include, why they use hex screws instead of like the typical Phillips is that I guess because it's, there's like the six points of contact instead of the four, it's a lot harder then for the user to end up stripping the screw, which I did not realize, but it makes a lot of sense. The other thing is that because there are more points of contact between like the Allen wrench and the screw than there would be between like a Phillips head screwdriver and a, uh, and a Phillips, uh, head screw. Come on. Is that it's supposed to be a lot easier to apply like torque to it. So it should be easier to apply it. Now I was thinking this whole time that it was actually harder to use the, the Allen wrench tool um, because the piece of metal like it's not as comfortable on your hand as like a padded screwdriver handle is but like also I guess realistically if we're talking about a cheap screwdriver it's probably also not going to be that great to grip so maybe an Allen wrench really is the best solution there um, but it just surprised me because I did not realize prior to this how like common allen wrenches are and hex screws are oh no i forgot an ender chest okay we're gonna have to go back to the overworld whoops um and the reason why i need the ender chest is because the same shulker boxes that i was using to collect the maps on the way back from the end i was gonna just you know fill them with netherrack 
because I just like I intend to save all of the lava and buckets for fuel, um, I don't believe in just throwing netherrack away. We're either going to use it when we um, start harvesting and farming crimson. Uh, oh my word, what are these called? Whatever these are. Okay, when we start harvesting like the, the crimson fungi, I... I'm gonna need netherrack for that because that's what they grow on. Um, did all of the animal- okay, that's not great. Whoops. Um, well, it's peaceful, so he'll just- he'll just disappear after a while, I think. No, that's not normal. Did they change how things work? Cause I thought they just disappeared. They changed things, didn't they? That's interesting. I wonder if that's actually a bug. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? We're not going to deal with that today. I'm just, you know what? I did not see it. I did not see it. I pretend I do not see. Anyway, I did not realize how common um, Allen wrenches are because um, the furniture purchase I had then made prior to that. Wait, did I have... Don't tell me I had the under... I had the under chest on me the whole time. I didn't need to come back. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. The piece of furniture I assembled prior to the laundry hamper was my desk chair that I am currently sitting in, um, which of course required an Allen wrench because I didn't get like a, I didn't get an expensive chair. I got what I would, I think it's considered probably either a budget or mid range office chair and I got it on sale. Which was, which was the main reason I got it, because chairs are expensive. Like, I cannot believe there are chairs out there that can cost you multiple thousands of dollars. And obviously that is not what I paid for this chair. That just, it seems like a lot, and I can kind of understand why it costs that much. But still, it just, it seems like a lot. So I'll be filling this with netherrack. As I was saying, I interrupted myself and now I can't think of how to get back on track. Um, ooh, should I separate the gravel from the flint? Nah, I think it's fine. Um, you know what, that's probably fine. And the reason, and by the way, the reason why I grabbed the flint is because when you have fletchers for sticks, um, they can also trade flint and then it gives you something you can at least trade until they refresh. And now I don't remember. I know that it's like, I think I need to count eight between each space. So I should find a number that is easily divisible by eight. That way it will be easier for me to keep track of where I'm digging. So this is, okay. So 30, okay, 338. I think 332... 340? Is 340 divisible by 8? Yes? No. 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 Because it's 32. 32. Okay. So. Why am I struggling to think this through? Oh my word. Okay. This is what happens when you spend so much of your time using the calculator on your phone that you forget how to do basic math in your brain. I think it also doesn't help that this music is kind of loud. I don't know, maybe it's not that bad? Maybe it's not that bad. Alright, I can think this through, because 32 is divisible by 8, so that means that 320, so 328, and then it would be 336? Yes, okay. Okay, music has stopped. I think that was part of the problem. I don't know why. Okay, that is in case my uh, my pickaxes start to run low. And then, here we go. And, yep, that was predictable. Um, I see some gold nuggets. No netherite. You know what? I should just go ahead and explode the other side, too. There we go. Anything of value. Anything of value. I don't see anything of value. That is that is a tiny bit disappointing. The other thing that also requires an Allen wrench that I was surprised by was my bed frame. Because um, I had to move my bed recently. Um, and it's just, I, I don't know why I didn't realize how common 
Allen wrenches are. I don't know why I thought in my mind that the only kinds of screwdrivers and screws have flatheads or Phillips. I don't know why. It probably doesn't help that I'm like not... Like I am very much like the stereotypical nerd who does stuff on the computer and not a whole lot of like car and hardware type. Like I'm not the kind of person to like do a whole lot when it comes to I guess fixing stuff up around the house if that makes sense. And so a lot of stuff is just kind of, I'm not familiar with it. Anything here? No, okay, this was, okay, this was the gravel patch that I mined. That's quartz. I should mark that with a torch, so that when I need more quartz, I will know to come here. Yes. Okay, now it's coming back to me, the stuff I, <laughs> the videos I watched about storytelling and how to do well. And it was weird, because it's like, one of the things was, hey, don't over-prepare. And I had notes for stuff that I wanted to talk about when talking about furniture assembly. And then I completely forgot about them. Until just now. So I don't... I feel like that means I failed. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> I placed that bed one block too close, didn't I? I feel like that was not where it was supposed to be. Because the, the main big story that I had about furniture assembly because, you know, the, the issues that I had with the instructions not being completely clear and, you know, the confusion I had about realizing that Allen wrenches were way more, like, common to use than I thought they were, none of that compared to, like, the difficulty I had with assembling my computer desk. <sighs> and honestly, part of me isn't sure where to start with this story. I guess it's to start with the search for my desk as it began. So if, wait, okay, I might need a 54, that's why. Okay. If you see people, so if you've seen like most computer desks, they're usually pretty open, which, you know, I guess that's good for airflow and such, cause you know, it's very easy for computers to overheat. Um, this was something that I kind of forgot about when I picked my current, um, desk, but I don't think it's too bad. Ooh! Nice! Anyway, um, I kind of forgot that, you know, I should probably consider the impact that airflow will have on my, on my laptop. Um, but anyway... So the issue with, that I had at least, with the idea of getting a desk that was open is I really don't enjoy cleaning. And the thing is, whenever you have an open space, it's gonna get a lot of dust. And I just, I don't like dusting. It's like, what do you mean I did nothing and my house still got dirty? Like that just, it seems like such a scam. Which I know is not an unpopular opinion. But it's, I, I don't see it represented enough, and like, yeah, I know technically it's like, I need to dust off the keyboard anyway, but it's the idea of having to dust off, like, the entire desk that for some reason I just do not like. Um, why did I jump into the fire? That was not smart. Should I have gotten fire protection? I'm, I'm seriously questioning if getting fire protection armor might actually be worth it just to not have to deal with that. So I was trying to look for something that would be enclosed because also like I, I do IT work um, as my day job and part of that involves sometimes cleaning the computers and I have seen a lot of dust in computers to the point where it makes me think that the person never like like, it makes me terrified to know how long that computer had been that filled with dust, how long the fans had been choking before it was cleaned, because that is not good for your computer at all. So I wanted to avoid that as much as possible, and I figured the best way to try and mitigate that 
was to see if I could find a cabinet with doors that closed. And, you know, you, you might be thinking, oh, that's bad. But, I mean, the thing is, I'd have the doors open while I used it because you kind of have to. So I have to have the doors open anyway in order to use my computer, right? So I figured it'll be fine. It'll get air circulation then because the doors will be open. It's not like it's going to be trapped in a cabinet with the doors closed. Um, so I thought that would be fine. Um, but the issue is, is that I also have a very small space. And so trying to find something with number one, doors that closed, and number two was like under four feet wide was a challenge. Because everything that like was called a computer armoire, because I, I guess that's the word that they use to describe these things. Every one that I saw was like this gigantic thing that they expected you to have in like a study. I, I assume, it's like I don't know who their target audience is for these products. I just know that it's not me. It's, it's probably people who are like fancy and have like an entire study. Which I, like do people even still have studies? Is that a thing? So I struggled and struggled. And then by the time I finally found something, there was exactly one thing... Wait, okay. The other, I forgot the other main, <laughs> uh, the other main attribute that I needed my desk to have, which, now that I think about it, that actually could explain why all of them were so, why the market, well, why the intended buyer seemed to be somebody who had a lot more money, is also, like, I kind of suspected that I would be moving soon after purchasing this desk, but I didn't want to hold off on purchasing the desk because what I had been using was this particle board thing that had outlived its useful life by, I would say, uh, 10 years at least, if I'm being generous. And I, I just, I did not want to keep using it because I did not see the point. So it had outlived its useful life. And so I really, like, I knew I would be moving soon, but I didn't want to just continue to suffer and not have a decent desk. Um, so I was trying to find something that would be small, and I figured, you know what, worst case scenario, if I actually do end up having a lot of space, and I would want one of these larger um, desks, that, you know, I could then repurpose this to be something else. Um, okay. Sorry, I got distracted, so I forgot to say the other attribute that it needed was because I was moving, um, I wanted to make sure that instead of getting particle... How did I miss that? Instead of getting, like, particle board, which is what it seems most um, desks are made from nowadays, because the issue I have with particle board is it doesn't hold up very well, and also, like, when you're talking about heaviness, yes, wood is heavy, but particle board is actually more dense. And it's not as sturdy. So you end up carrying something that's a lot heavier, but not a lot sturdier. Whereas wood, it's lighter and stronger. So, you know, in my mind, it made way more sense to find something that is wood. Um, but the issue is that, again, most wood furniture is extremely expensive. And that's why I'm now realizing, oh, hey, the reason why every other one was this giant thing that would only be fit for a study is because people who would use this are, are people who have a study you know, you know, people people way outside of my income bracket. Um, but anyway, I did eventually find one that was pretty small, and it looked cute. Uh, but there was one major issue with it. Uh, it wasn't finished. Uh, which meant that in order for you to... I mean, technically, you could use it unfinished. But the thing is, like, you're talking about wood, right? So... That means that with the fluctuation in temperature or humidity, uh, that wouldn't be so great for the furniture. And it's like, if you're going to spend this money, you kind of want to protect your investment, so to speak. And so I had to try to figure out how I was going to finish uh, this piece of furniture. Oh, come on. But, you know, I, I thought it would be easy enough, but, um... Because I had had a woodshop class, like, you know, years before this. And, like, I remembered that it was something that I had... Okay, that's not great. 
Um, it, it, where are you? Where are you? There you are. Anyway, I had had a wood shop class, so I knew that I personally was capable of doing this, but I think I had kind of forgotten how involved working with wood furniture is. Um, cause like I, I remembered that it's like, okay, you apply the stain to make it a color other than just the normal wood color. And then you also have to seal it in with like polyurethane, which, you know, it sounded easy enough. And now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the kind of polyurethane they used in my woodshop classes, they might have had like the sprayer thing. So that's, you know, that's kind of easy-ish, I guess. Um, and so I thought that this would be very doable. And uh, I would have my desk within like a month of me uh, receiving all of the wood pieces in the mail. Um, and this happened, I think... Uh, shortly after I had kind of started recording videos, I don't remember how shortly after, it might have been within half a year, it took way more than a month for me to get it done. In fact, I think it put, took the better part of a year for me from like the time that I received all of the wood pieces to me finishing uh, the desk and getting it ready. So like I said, I'm pretty sure the polyurethane they had in the class, I think it was the kind where you just spray it on. Whereas the polyurethane that I ended up using, I had to apply with a brush. And it's like, I got the stuff that was quick dry, because originally we were going to use this polyurethane that we just had lying in the basement uh, until we realized, oh hey, you know, this stuff that's been in here for so long might, might not be a good idea to use it on a new piece of furniture. In fact, that might be very bad. So I had to use the brush, and then it's like, I had to... I then kept seeing, oh hey, you know, minimum is three coats. You should really do way more than that. And I'm like, excuse me? I have to wait like four to six hours in between coats, and that's assuming everything has gone well. Like, wood furniture is expensive, and now the, the main question I have in my mind is, why is it not more expensive? because there's a lot of work that is involved. I just, I don't understand. I thought it would be a lot easier for me to tell stories while also doing this. I think maybe partially because it's been so long since I've done netherite mining that I'm kind of, am, I'm kind of relearning how to do it, if that makes sense. Like it's not something that comes second nature and I think I was assuming that it would be and that it would be easy to think of things to talk to. And actually it's not. Or at least it's not It's not as easy as I thought it would be. Which now that I think about it, it is kind of strange that we just refer to it as netherite mining. And really we're not mining netherite, we're mining ancient debris. But maybe, maybe that's a technicality that doesn't bother anybody else. Because I guess the end result is that you are trying to obtain netherite. I don't know, language is weird. <laughs> 